Hey everybody, how's it going? It's Matt here from Piano Blog. We're getting set up here in the new school location, but I wanted to turn the camera on a second and make a quick video about how important it is when you're practicing technique to really be aware of what muscle groups you're using. And I had a specific instance in a piece of music, the, the Beethoven Pastoral Sonata, that comes up over and over again with students. That's just a really good example of this. There's a, a repeated phrase, a repeated melody in the music that often comes in octaves in both hands um, along with some finger movements, but the melody itself is in the top. So it it's goes something like... But you play that in octaves um, in the right hand and there's accompaniment in finger movements. So it's stuff like that, where you have the melody up top here, but then this sort of movement in, in the fingers. And uh, I've noticed over and over again when I teach this that this gives people problems, students problems, because what they try to do is they try to, to they, they're moving their fingers like this, and they try to play the melody from this knuckle joint just like they're playing the accompaniment. And so they try to do things like this. I don't know if I can, if you can see it, I'm trying to exaggerate, but they, they actually try to use the fingers to play this melody instead of the arms, and because this goes on sometimes for, for about a page, <clears throat> you really end up tensing up the forearms when you play like that because you're using these small muscle groups and you're in sort of extended strange hand positions in some of these harmonies. Uh, you end up tensing up quite a lot, <clears throat> and I've seen students get to the end of a page and just completely break down because they have so much tension. It's a really good example of uh, how if you're using the right muscle groups is actually not that difficult just in, in terms of the technique, this sort of thing. And so the way you really want to approach this sort of passage at least is that uh, you're playing these octaves with drops. You see that's your melody. For most people, this works well in drops, and then you have to differentiate that with the uh, the uh, accompaniment. Let, where am I here? Okay, so I'm using this, these muscles, these finger movements for the accompaniment, and drops from the arm actually for the melody. Now, it's one thing to say that, and it's another thing to actually do it. So when I, when I talk with this about students, they, they kind of will rush into this technique, and then of course what happens is they, they just kind of try and muscle through that. So I'll give you a couple ways to practice this sort of thing when you have two different movements. The, the main thing you want to do is, at first, if your body's not used to using the two different movements, you want to really make sure that you're distinguishing uh, between which muscle groups you're using. So one way that you might approach something like this is to first chord it, so to play these harmonies in drops. Something like that. And then you actually have to pause each time you have one of those drops and make sure you're using these muscles, the arm movements of a drop, instead of these muscles from the fingers. So the way that you would practice it is you would play drop, okay, and then finger movement, and that would land you, you'd be now set for the next drop, so you'd have to pause, drop, finger movement, finger movement, okay, and then you get over the next hand position, drop, drop. You see, so I'm pausing before each drop of the melody. A lot of people, I've found, don't have the patience to really make sure that they're pausing before each drop and then they revert back into the old muscle habit. And so you really have to take maybe 
a couple measures and practice like this. This is if your if your muscles if you if your kind of muscle memory doesn't automatically do this. So you want to take just a drop. Okay, then I'm gonna use my finger, pause, drop. Okay, now this is all fingers, so I'm relaxed here. Right, and then drop. I'm, remember, before each drop, I'm getting over the hand position. Okay, so you have to be really quite patient. And then you can try to, over time, over a couple weeks or so, you'll start to see that that kind of glues together into a, a more fluid motion. So you'll feel like you have a drop and then that up kind of is tied in with the finger movement, you see? And so you can kind of start to glue this together into something a little more fluid so it's not too blocky. But the first step in the technique is to really just take it apart. So practicing in chords and drops, and then pausing before each drop, making sure you're above the notes, so you're not trying to make a movement part of the drop. Then you drop, Okay, so I've, I've, I've used my arm there, and then I'm wiggle, 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 drop, wiggle, wiggle, wiggle. One detail here in this particular passage is that what you'll see people do is they'll, they'll mix up, so the wiggle, for example, here, what I'm calling a wiggle, I'm using a little bit of, of rotation, a little bit of thumb, just a little bit of my, my thumb movement here. I don't want to use that thumb movement when I'm doing the drop. The drop needs to be like this, not like this. You see? So it's drop and then wiggle. So on each of those, if I'm using my thumb, I don't want to confuse this with this. You really want to kind of differentiate those two movement patterns. So this is just one example of how you can take a passage when you're, when you're using two different muscle groups and take it apart and make sure that you're not using the wrong muscle groups uh, to play. It, you know, it, if you do that sort of work, something that, that really tenses people up, that tenses you up, and it's very, very difficult to get through, can become very easy over time. And that's just one example. You can kind of take that sort of practice and apply it to all sorts of different music. So I hope you find this helpful. Uh, if you like this content, make sure you subscribe. Click the subscribe button below this video. Click on the bell icon so you get notifications when I post a new video. And I've posted links to uh, free piano lessons, free beginner piano lessons, free technique lessons below this video. So make sure you check it out. And I'll see you next time. Bye-bye, everybody. Happy practicing.